It was not long after the proclamation of the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception that Our Lady decided to appear to St. Bernadette in the little town of Lourdes. It was only about eight years afterwards. And you know, Bernadette, she wasn't looking for Our Lady. She was just out collecting firewood with her sister and her sister's friend. And uh, they came from a very poor family. They were living in a condemned prison, actually. Her father had been a miller who lost his job. And so they had to live in this kind of government housing type thing in the old prison that wasn't even good enough for prisoners. And so they were living there. And Bernadette was always very sick with um, asthma and so forth. And so when her sister sister and her friend crossed the stream to go get some wood, uh, Bernadette was there and and, and she looked up and she saw Our Lady standing there. She didn't know it was Our Lady at the time. She just said it was a beautiful woman clothed in white. And she was holding her rosary with two pale yellow roses on her feet and blue sash. And and so Bernadette didn't know what to do. And she reached in her pocket to grab her rosary, but she couldn't even move her arms. She couldn't pick her arms up until Our Lady made the sign of the cross. And then she was able to pick up her rosary and start praying the rosary. And then Our Lady smiled and left. She went back there, Bernadette, and Our Lady appeared to her again and asked her to come there every day for 15 days in succession and to pray and pray the rosary. And so Bernadette did. She would go there dutifully and she'd pray the rosary and all of the uh, people started coming, you know, this girl seeing Our Lady and there was... Things that would happen, she would just go into this ecstasy where she was unconscious of anything around her as she beheld the Blessed Mother. Someone told her that she was being tricked and that it could be the devil. And so she brought holy water and she splashed it at Our Lady. Our Lady just kind of smiled, (laughs) you know, kind of cute uh, that that she would do this, you know. And Our Lady would just kind of smile at her when she did it. Um, And then one time when she was praying, she had a candle And the candle went under her hand and the flame was engulfing her hand and yet she felt nothing and there was no burn marks or anything. And then that day came when Our Lady told her to go and to uh, drink from the stream, eat of the grass, and to wash. And so she immediately went to the river that was right there, but Our Lady said no and pointed underneath the the cavern there. There was a little spot there. There was a little mud on the ground there. And so she dutifully you know, <laughs> went and she um, she began to, took some of the muddy water and sipped a bit of it while I put her face and kind of making herself look almost foolish. People were kind of laughing at her as she began to dig to try to find the stream Our Lady pointed to. And uh, eventually from that little hole, water started coming out. So much so that it created a little pool around it and so forth and uh, began this constant stream that to this day when you go to Lourdes, the patio... Uh, is over the water that flows out from that little hole, <laughs> you know, that, our, that St. Bernadette had dug. Um, and Our Lady did ask that a church be built there and that processions would go forth to that spot where she would be honored and so forth. And so, um, so Bernadette, you know, dutifully followed and told the priest that Our Lady wanted the church built there and so forth. And immediately that water began to bring healing to many, many people. One of the first persons healed was a blind man um, and then a little baby was given his life back in the waters. And to this day, miracles still happen at those waters. We'll get back to that in a minute. But one of the most beautiful parts is when Our Lady, when, when finally Bernadette asked her, said, Who, what's your name? Uh, she didn't know the whole time. Bernadette wasn't sure who this woman from heaven was. She said it was a woman from heaven. So finally she said, Who are you? And Our Lady stretched out her hands and said, I am the Immaculate Conception. She had this beautiful motion of kind of pulling her hands together the way that priests used to, used to say glory to God in the highest. That's how the priests used to do it when they said the Gloria. He'd, make, he'd bring his hands around and bow his head for the glory to God. And our lady does as she pulls her hands around, folds them, and she bows her head and says, I am the Immaculate Conception. Which in one set which was a little strange. Now the church just declared that our lady uh, being conceived immaculate, that she was the conceived without the state of original sin and called her the immaculate conception. But conception is an event. <laughs> you know, it's not, how does one define oneself as the immaculate conception? And so uh, those words of our lady baffled the church for, for years. You know, how can someone say that they are a concept, conception? You know, and um, so later on, many years later, uh, St. Maximian Kolbe who died in the death camps of Auschwitz, he said that Our Lady could call herself the Immaculate Conception because she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is eternally conceived between the love of the Father and the Son. 
And so since she's the spouse of the Spirit, she could say, I am the Immaculate Conception. But that's another homily for another day. <laughs> so, but this beautiful moment where Our Lady proclaims herself as the Immaculate Conception. Uh, she reaffirms the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. And she shows forth the beauty of her love, her gentleness, her true maternity, uh, her care for her children, particularly the sick, as the healing waters that flow from Lord's heel to this very day. Um, you know, France was still rivaling back from the horrible, horrible French Revolution. The French Revolution was primarily an anti-Catholic movement. Uh, every day, dozens of priests and sisters were, 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 had their heads chopped off at the guillotine, and uh, the ground was so soaked in blood that if you walked past the guillotine, you, your feet would track blood prints down the street because the ground was so wet, it couldn't soak in all the blood from all the people who were being killed at the guillotine. You know, the French Revolution even changed the weekdays from a seven-day week to a ten-day week to get rid of Sundays. You know, it was a very anti-Catholic movement, the French Revolution. And so with Our Lady appearing, it kind of, you know, was seal sealed the fate of the revolution to basically say, no, God, God is still real. God is still here. Uh, God still works miracles, and Our Lady still loves us. <laughs> and so this beautiful moment of it. Um, not too long, well, about 20 years ago, I was watching 2020. Remember that old TV show, 2020? And they did a special of a man who had been, gotten married and soon after his marriage had gotten paralyzed um, from the neck down. And his wife brought him to Lourdes. And they went to Lourdes and they were there and they put him into the bath. He did the normal things you would do at Lourdes and, and nothing was happening. And, you know, and so the last night there, they're kind of sad that he wasn't healed and so his wife gets him ready for bed and, you know, she's praying the rosary at his bedside. And as she's praying the rosary, he jumps up screaming in pain, runs out of the room, runs back in and was completely healed through the waters of, of the Lord, through the intercession of Our Lady. 2020 did the report. Well, nine months later, they gave birth to their baby, uh, Marie Bernadette. <laughs> so a blessing on top of a blessing, you know. The beautiful love of Our Lady, her gentleness, I met a priest who was uh, born with cerebral palsy. He had no bones in his left hand. And um, he was, wasn't even Catholic. And his mother always said, one day you'll go to Lourdes. And so when he was in college, there was a boy who was sick. And he, he knew that he was working kind of a social work, I guess. And so he decided to go to Lourdes and bring back Lourdes water for this boy. And while he was at Lourdes, he was trying to turn the handles, because now they have all these faucets running from the stream, you know. So he was trying to turn the faucet to get and hold the bottle at the same time, but he couldn't because he had no bones in his hand. So a man came over to help him, so he helped him fill the bottles. And then the man said, put your hand under the water. He said, no, 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 I came here for a little boy. He says, put your hand under the water. So he put his hand under the water, and he watched the bones grow in his hand, and his hand stretched out. He got off the plane holding his bags in both hands and his mother fainted. <laughs> he went on to become Catholic and to become a Catholic priest in Connecticut, um, giving the full use of the, the gift of the bones. He said it was the weirdest thing to feel and to watch bones grow in your hand. You know, Our Lady still shows her love at Lourdes. It's one of the most beautiful shrines to visit, to go there and to pray there and to, and to play that spot where Our Lady showed herself to be this loving, loving mother. St. Bernadette would go on to live, uh, to join the convent, and she, only, she died around 34 years old, very young, of tuberculosis. And she really understood the mystery of suffering. Like nobody knew that she had tuberculosis. Tumors on her legs, she didn't say a word to anybody. She just offered in union with the cross of Christ Jesus for the conversion of souls. Uh, she had a bit of a snippy attitude, St. Bernadette. Uh, she's kind of famous for her snippiness. <laughs> so... Uh, so uh, and she never liked, after seeing the Blessed Mother, she didn't like any statue of the Blessed Mother. She never liked any statue. So when the convent got a new statue of the Blessed Mother, all the girls were excited, all the sisters like, oh, come. So she gets there, she goes, it's ugly. <laughs> you know, kind of like this little snippy attitude. Like after seeing the Blessed Mother, nothing could compare to the beauty of she herself. So she never liked any statue of her, <laughs> you know, because she had seen the beauty of Our Lady. So today, this Feast of Our Lady of Lords, we just think about and we reflect upon uh, the intense beauty of Our Lady, how much she loves us as a mother, how much she cares for us, how much she wants to bring us more than physical healing, but interior healing, how much she wants to bring us to Christ, how much she wants to know the beauty of her son, 
After all, that was, wasn't that her whole mission? She reveals the mystery of the incarnation to St. Joseph. She brings our Lord to St. Elizabeth. She shows the Lord to the three kings. She shows our Lord to the shepherds. She shows our Lord to Simeon in the temple. She brings our Lord all the way to Egypt and brings him back to, to Nazareth. And the wedding feast of Cana, she gave him to the world when she told him to begin his ministry. When she sent him to offer himself for love of us. And so beautifully in turn on the cross, our Lord gives her to us. When the Lord proclaims from the beauty of that cross, behold your mother. How beautiful God. He not only gives us his father to be our father, but Jesus gives us his mother to be our mother. And what a beautiful mother she is. May God bless you and Mary keep you.